not a Chinese. Don't criticize the government. We have to be obedient. We work hard. We try simply to uh, follow the rules and uh, do not raise any kind of uh, rebellious questions. On the other hand, there's always been a major tradition in, the, in Confucian humanism. Uh, that is to understand politics not simply as a distribution of power, but to try to moralize politics try to argue that only the people who are exemplary teachers ought to be politically influential teachers. So how to moralize politics has always been a major concern of the Confucian intellectuals. And how to use Confucian ideas or ethics to develop a stable society has often, often been the concern of uh, those who are in power in East Asia. So we even see that uh, going on today. Uh, before the uh, Tiananmen massacre, many of the students who mobilized themselves in arguing against the current regime, first they didn't evoke any Western ideas of democracy or freedom. They basically talked about the public accountability of the government. They talked about corruption of the government. They focused their attention on the inability of the government to develop itself as really uh, the leader of, of the land. So the students consider themselves as the conscience of the people. That's one of the reasons why not only uh, the citizens of Peking, but uh, government officials and members of the security police were moved because the students use a language which is very deeply rooted in Chinese consciousness. They are not representing their own interest. They are really the voice of the people. Is that Confucianism? Very deeply rooted in Confucianism. Because Confucian. the intellectuals are supposed to be the eyes and ears eyes of, the, of the people. Of the people. And also this uh, very old saying that heaven sees as the people see, and heaven hears as the people hear. And if the intellectuals, of which always constitute a very small minority, if they manage to articulate the voice of the people for the well-being of the society as a whole, they in fact perform an important function, not only social, but cosmic, in the sense that uh, they help the people to be able to um, raise their concern. And the government will have to respond to that particular kind of challenge. The paradox, though, is that uh, the intellectuals who still, as you say, are espousing or at least revealing this tradition in Confucianism are a minority. The party runs China, and the party is mostly peasants and military and That's workers, the, case. Uh, the illiterates of China. That's precisely the situation. So reality is frustrating the Confucian tradition there. On the other hand, the other side, the sinister side of Confucianism, with emphasis on authoritarian control, obedience, all these ideas, don't use any kind of Western ideas of democracy or human rights and so forth. You should exercise your duty, because duty consciousness has always been pronounced in the Confucian culture, whereas rights consciousness up to this day has never been fully developed. What do you mean, the duty consciousness? Duty consciousness, meaning that you have to prove you are a worthy member of the, uh, um, of the community as a whole to be able to voice your demands for certain kind of rights and ideas. As over and against the right, we say, I have this right to say No this. matter what. Yeah. Right. Now, what we have in China, the tragedy is this. The students, overwhelmed by the uh, irresponsibility and insensitivity of the regime, using all these traditional symbols of patriotism, loyalty, filial piety, and so forth, to crush them, they became totally westernized. Therefore, the they Statue could, of Liberty was the Statue a, of Liberty, an expression of that. They just couldn't see the powerful forces within, even though they use it. They couldn't see that, so they became totally westernized. And in so doing, unfortunately, they gave some of the most powerful weapons to their adversaries. Because even the workers, the peasants, they couldn't fully appreciate what the students are, are striving for. But they could now hear the kind of inauthentic, but still persuasive, quote, politicized Confucian voice, which is obedience, duty, commitment to the, to the goal of socialism, and so forth. So unless a fruitful interaction becomes possible between liberal democratic ideas on the one hand 
and the indigenous resources in Confucian culture as a uh, defining characteristic of the mode of protest of the students. The future of democratic movement or democratization movement in China is still quite bleak. So there has to be a fusion. A the, fusion. Something of the West, but not so much of the West that it overwhelms the indigenous. It's not in even, even just the conflict between the West and China. It's really uh, a fusion uh, at many different levels. Now, we may have to say the repertoire for human survival in terms of symbolic resources will have to be extended beyond the Europe-centered mentality, despite the fact every one of us, I myself very much included, is a beneficiary of this mentality. I think more like a Westerner than like a traditional Confucian uh, scholar. No, no matter how I, I try to uh, tap uh, spiritual resources from my own tradition, I'm critically aware of that. And also I share that idea with many other scholars um, in China and Japan. So we are beneficiaries of the enlightenment mentality, of rationality, of science, of technology, of uh, the market economy, of democratic institutions. But we're also critically aware that the Europe-centered mentality is limited. There are great resources, not only in Hinduism, Confucianism, Taoism, um, but also in American Indian spirituality, Hawaiian spirituality, Pacific Island spirituality. These will have to be tapped. Look into the 21st century. What are some of the symbolic resources we have to tap into in order to formulate an integrated, coherent, humanistic vision. From the Asia Society in New York City, this has been a conversation with Duwei Ming. I'm Bill Moyers. Funding for this program was provided by the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, a catalyst for change. Corporate underwriting was provided by General Motors and its almost 800,000 employees in 38 countries. General Motors is committed to excellence in quality products and television programming. <laughs>